thank you, God, that the scales of judgment are in our favor. The scales of judgment are in our favor. The scales of judgment are in our favor. I thank you, God, for your fire, for your fire, the fire. Come on, there's a fire in here. There's a fire in here. I feel the fire.
reveal something greater than we've ever experienced in a moment in our lives as the world is getting worse the grace of God is getting stronger and as believers we got to respond you got to know how to respond don't let your mind don't let your knowledge don't let whatever it is stop you from moments where you can respond to God it doesn't have to be religious it doesn't have to be systematic it just needs to be the the heart response so I want you to just lift your hands one moment and look at the Lord look up into the sky like you can see him right in front of you like I can really see you and God is looking down on you and you can see him smiling like I did this for you I, I really did this for you and I can't wait for the day that we can embrace but I want you as you're looking up I want you to, to have this on your mind I want you to say God I don't want to wait to embrace you I want to embrace you now and I want you to stretch your arms as if you can hug Jesus. I want you to stretch your heart as if you can really hug the Lord right now. And I want you to receive the love of the Father. I want you to receive the blessing of the Son right now in your spirit. Receive him right now. He's ready. He's ready. Your sin can't stop him. Your fear can't stop him. Your doubt can't stop him. He's here. He's here. Receive him right now. He died for sons and daughters that would reach up to him, that would respond to him and say, God, I'm in love with you. There is no distance between us. There are no problems between us. My heart and your heart are together. My spirit and your spirit are one. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Let's worship God. He is great. He is mighty. He is wonderful. He is the blessing of our lives. We adore you. We desire you. There is none in heaven beside you. We seek you. We seek you. We receive that love. We receive that holiness. We receive that peace. We receive the benefits of heaven right now. Because we belong to you. We belong to you. We belong to you and you are our portion. 
Come on, receive him now. Yokes are breaking. Mindsets are changing. Transformation is being released. You are in the presence of God. You're not in your current situation. You belong in the presence of God. Receive your healing now. Receive your deliverance now. Receive that intimacy now. We're going there. Yeah, we're going there. We're going there. Yeah, we're going there. We belong seated in heavenly places. Position yourself, saints. Position yourself, children of God. Sitting on the lap of the Father. Sitting on the throne with Jesus. Come on. Roko say. Resebe kosaya. Rusi arabosea. Spirit to spirit. Heart to heart. Face to face. Mouth to mouth. We're there. We're there. We're there. Right there. To the moment that you're fully aware that God is real and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him until you're fully aware that nothing persuaded, that nothing will separate you from the love of God till you're fully persuaded where Paul said the love of Christ constrains me I am chained to this thing I am chained to the will of God I am chained to the presence of God I am chained to the benefit of the throne of Jesus those viewing live online lift your hands lift your hands we know that God fills the heavens and the earth so there is no limit to his presence there's no limit to the anointing that we're experiencing here is the same anointing you're going to experience there may the spirit of God close the gap of the distance between you and him and may the love of God flood your living rooms and flood your homes and flood your lives and flood everything connected to you. May this be one of the greatest seasons we've ever experienced as believers. May this be one of the mightiest seasons we've ever seen in the kingdom of God. If you believe it, begin to worship God. Oh, we're going up. We're going up. I'm going up. Lay aside every sin and every weight. Lay aside un every unnecessary thing. We seek your kingdom. We seek your righteousness. There's one thing, say one thing, that really moves the heart of the Father. That is a pursuer. That is a person who has strong legs, who knows how to run after God. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Not a person who, see entitlement don't let you run, it lets you sit. It lets you sit down because you expect God to bring everything to you. But the Bible says draw near to God and he'll draw near. Oh, only four people got that. I don't feel God. Well, are you drawing? I don't sense God, but are you drawing? I fail, but the righteous man gets up seven. We got to be runners. We got to be runners. So, somebody got to run. That's why Paul said, I run my race. I run my race to complete my race. Forgetting what lays behind me and pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you. I felt the presence of God three hours before I even got here. And I just know that God wants to bring the congregation under the cloud. God said, I didn't bring you out to leave you uncovered. I'm putting you under the cloud. There are seasons just like the children of Israel where we feel like Man, them, leaking, them leeks and onions might be really good right now. There are moments where we feel like, man, God, did you bring us out here just to destroy us? 
God, have you brought us this far to let us try to do it on our own? We begun in the spirit, God, but now I feel like I'm moving in the flesh. But then you're like David. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. you like David. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. I don't even got to be near the altar. I want to be the one that opens and closes the door. As a matter of fact, they shouldn't let me do that because a lot of people wouldn't get in. But at least I can open the door and see the glory of the Lord flooding the place. Instead of being in hell with a worm, and I couldn't imagine an animal that doesn't die with the hottest fire ever known to man. When we get to sit with him in glory. Lift your hands one more time. The reason why... I I say lift your hands is because number one your right hand is a hand of authority and your left hand is a hand is a hand of fellowship may the Lord touch every hand in this building and may the hand of God give some of you a handshake give some of you a hand embrace a clutching of hands and may for some of you it be a high five because God is well pleased with many of you but the devil's been whooping on you and you're thinking you're not winning because things don't look right, don't feel right, don't sound right but God is giving you a high five because he's saying well done my good and faithful servant and you're only in a transition because a lot of times when things aren't moving it's because you're in between doors And when you're in between doors, it's because you completed the last assignment. Say amen. Father, we love you and we surrender to you every single day, moment by moment. You know, my heart is, God, I love great beginnings. But I really love good finishes. I don't want to be stirred up just for a Sunday service or a Tuesday night Bible study. I want to finish well. I'm interested in completing the course. That requires pursuit because each level, there's a dependency we have to have. God, I need you more today than I've ever needed you before in my life. I need you to keep my fire. I need you to keep my intimacy. I need you to keep my giftings. I need you to keep me effective for the kingdom of God. I need you to keep me humble. I need you to keep me meek. And I need you to keep me loving regardless of everything that we go through. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. I don't want you all to be moving too fast because the presence of the Lord is in here. We may be subject by the move of the Holy Spirit to uh, prophesy or moving healing or even deliverance. But I believe God came after our heart tonight. Say my heart. God want my heart. God want my heart. And there's different compartments in the heart. You know, there's four chambers. I believe as a believer, sometimes we give God four chambers. Sometimes we give him three. Sometimes we give him two chambers. And we keep the other two because I got to protect myself. I got to do this thing. But I believe God is bringing us into a place where we get the whole heart. Say the whole heart. God, I give you my whole heart. We're in a season that we've been experiencing such a great blessing. Financially. Many of you have seen, I really wanted to give my spiritual parents a certain amount of money. I wanted to bless them because I wanted to be a good son. I want to walk in honor. I don't want to take everything they gave me and then just be like, oh, I'm amazing church. My dad's an Alexander Pagani. I wanted to do something to invest in them, just like I want to do something to show the father that I'm willing to invest in whatever. he. Y'all not talking to me. And if I can't do it for man, I ain't going to do it for God. If you can't do it for a man, you ain't going to do it for God. Because the Bible says if you can't like your brother, how do you say you love God? 
And a lot of people say, it's just me and God. No, you can't have you and God without a person in between you and God. Uh, and that's a whole nother teaching. Say, I will honor. So we wanted to take a seed. And it was one of those moments where I said, I want to give you guys a $10,000 seed. And then I turned around and I thought to myself, I said, what in the heck did you do? You ever had those moments where you say something, uh, evangelist, and you say, what in the heck is wrong with you? Y'all ever had those moments of faith like you just blur some blah, 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 blah. And then you turn around and go, oh my goodness, I ain't got no money. Well, then God made a way. Say, God makes a way. We sold our home. We were able to tithe to our church and we were able to take a seed. I couldn't take my whole family. It cost too much. We had to be wise with our money and so my wife said, I'm going to go. She said, I'm going to stay here and do mass deliverance. Didn't she do a wonderful job with the Holy Spirit? How many people feel free of marine spirits? Them demons tried to come back the next week. They was hot. But they realized there was no more access. Y'all not ready to have that conversation. <laughs> and so she allowed me to go fly up there to be a blessing, to give a seed from me and her together because me and my wife are one. I was able to hand them a $10,000 seed and I began to prophesy over everyone connected. Say, I'm connected. So let me continue the prophetic word over this house. Right now, right now, many of you are in a season where you need significant seeds. And the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you, and many of you have checked your mailboxes and you've gotten checks and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to tell you we're entering a season of an overflow. The banks of the Jordan are beginning to flow and you're not going to be, you're not going to eat bread by the sweat of your brow. God is reclaiming all of the seeds you already sown. And then taking the harvest and dumping it right on top of your house. Dumping it on top of your bodies. Dumping it on top of your relationships. Dumping it on top of your marriages. Dumping it on top of your desires. God is getting ready to cause you to have the harvest that you sow for. And he's getting ready to multiply it. It's going into phases of 30. And then you're going to get another phase of 60. And then you're going to get another phase of 100 fold. The Spirit of God says, I'm going to increase my kingdom. That means increasing you as a people, empowering the atmosphere by the acknowledgement of his throne, and allowing kingdom resources to fall on you. Spirit of God says, the silver and the gold is mine. It's not the government's. That's why they switch from gold to paper. Y'all not ready to have that conversation. That's why they switch from gold to paper, because all the silver and gold belongs to God. Paper is dead. But God said we're not debtors. We're lenders. Many of you are going to transition from the season of being blessed into becoming blessers. Where the Bible says Jesus wrote and spoke to Apostle Paul. He said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And what you're going to realize as you are giving, the Bible says in Proverbs, as you scatter, you're going to gain all the more. Let me say this. Spirit of God even said, every gift will be am amplified. Every anointing will be increased. And a lot of you guys have desires that you've been seeking for the Lord for decades. A lot of these things are going to start unfolding. The Lord says there's going to be an unveiling. And many things will start unfolding. And God said, consider it not a dream. This is your new reality. Okay, I'll say it again. Consider it not a dream. When Peter got let loose, the angel kicked him on the side. He got up, walked him out of the jail cell. He said, the Bible says he thought it was a dream. But it was his reality. Many of you are going to transition from just desiring a thing to acquiring a thing. Many of you entrepreneurs God is getting ready to bump your business. 
I saw clientele and I saw hands and all these people behind hands and I saw like a crowd trying to force its way into a Walmart, you know, on the day of the day after Thanksgiving, right? I saw people forcing their way through these hands. The Spirit of the Lord says, there can no longer be retained the blessings that are getting ready to come to you. I saw people pushing through, breaking through. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God said, his word would not be void to you. Many of you, he's spoken to you in your private time. God said, do not reconsider what I've shared with you. There is a time and a season of concealment. And there's a time and a season of revealing. The Spirit of God says, I'm going to keep my word to you. And I'm going to keep my promises to you. Because I need you. I'm going to say that one more time. Most people say, God don't need nobody. No, God do. As long as you got a body here and you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, God need you. If God didn't need you, he would not have died for you. Y'all not ready to have that conversation. Y'all not ready to have that conversation. He needs us. Because we're on the earth. This is how we get the kingdom on the earth. Apostle Sonia, you have something you want to share? are just playing games with him and he wants more from us some of us were not giving our all some of us are just halfway in some of us are just playing games and he says he wants more from you the time of playing games is over the time of giving a partial or what you're comfortable with is over it's time to give him your everything because there is a judgment coming so we need to seek to please the father we need to get out of ourselves we need to surrender wholeheartedly Some of us are just, are caught up into ourselves and we don't see the truth. A lot of what you guys, a lot of what you guys are doing, a lot of what we're doing is, it doesn't even matter to him. Today I was in deep intercession and what was released from heaven was just go, go share the gospel go go none of no, nothing else matters to him what sacrifices are we giving him what offerings are we giving him we're paying our tithe and we feel accomplished we're going to church for a couple hours once a week twice a week and we're feeling accomplished we should be ashamed of ourselves God has need of you and we truly truly need to examine ourselves the Bible says be careful to how you hear and to what you hear For the measure that you meet will be measured back to you and what that means is in the beginning of this service God said he was after our hearts God said there were four chambers on my way here even my prayer was God I don't want to fall short it's easy to prophesy it's easy to cast out devils it's easy to revelate it's easy to do all of that 
but the will of the Father is what Jesus is looking for. And one thing that I know pleases Jesus is winning souls, which is one of the hardest things for believers. We love gifts. We love moving in gifts. But we're nervous sharing the gospel. We're afraid. God is saying, why? Why? I put you in that position. I gave you influence. I gave you the clientele. I gave you the business as a vehicle. I gave you this. I healed your bodies. I touched your life. Whom can I send and who will go for me? They were introducing me in Trinidad. You can put up the giving. They were introducing me in Trinidad. And when they were introducing me, the apostle said, this apostle runs a church covers several ministries we fly to all our different ministries run international ministry we run real international ministry orphanages schools feedings all this churches all of this yet when i'm at a place sitting down to eat or i'm shopping somewhere you better believe if you're gonna take my money you're gonna receive my jesus y'all didn't hear what i just said you're not gonna take from me and not take who put me in this position to sit here at this table or to be here at this job. I'm not afraid of, I never was afraid of losing my job. I preached the gospel on the job. I preached the gospel around my house. I preached the gospel to my neighborhood. I preached the gospel wherever I go. You want to know why? Because one soul will cause the Lord Jesus to appear. The Bible says at the fullness of Gentiles, you say, I want to see Jesus. Well, are you sharing the gospel? Because you may be the one to bring in the last soul. We're thinking, oh, I'm not going to share. I don't want to share. I don't want to go. It's too far. I don't want to. But what if you're the last one who closes the show? Online, what if you're the last one who closes the show? So we all got to sit here with a messed up America and frustrated people because the person right next to us is the last soul that Jesus wants to win and the reason why we don't win that soul you know why because I don't like them putting their trash cans on the front of my yard once they put it on their side y'all know how small they get I'm making it funny but I'm telling the truth the one person you don't like is the one person that that God wants I remember a guy hit me hit my brand new car kids in the back I just bought the car cash slammed in the back no insurance suspended license because of child support and I wanted to say why I oughta and the Lord said you oughta give him the gospel he gets saved on the spot there have been many positions that we're in but we cannot allow what we're going through to stop us from our main assignment say main assignment now we can have ministry but the question is, do you have the ministry of the Lord? We can prophesy. We can lay hands on the sick. Y'all seen it here. Y'all seen it here. But the power behind that is because these two apostles, we preach that gospel. Say amen. I believe that we're being put or placed in our proper position as a church. The church is not just a gathering. That's a lie. The church is an assembly of believers ready to make war and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. The gates of hell will not stop. And the reason why we have so much warfare is because the gates slamming on us because we're not sharing the gospel. But I'm going to tell you something. No gate will stand against me because we open every gate and say, King of glory, come right on in here. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. So we have eye gates, we have ear gates, but we're going to open our mouth gate. And we're going to let the King of glory come right on in. If you're with me, say amen. If you're with me, say amen. Now I know the Holy Spirit had put a few people on your mind. Don't be nervous, don't be afraid. Just tell them what God has done for you. Remember, you got a plant and you got a water. You may be the one sowing the seed for somebody else, or you may be the one watering the seed from someone else. But something must be done. Something must be done. 
as we are transitioning to our level of worship i want pastor jonathan and samantha to please stand up i want you to hold hands the spirit of god said and y'all can expect more prophecy i'm gonna be prophesying to all y'all because when we talk on the prophetic there's nothing there's nothing we can do we're handcuffed to this okay okay praise the Lord. they don't realize that whatever the anointing is that's what we do right if it's deliverance that's what we do right the spirit of god told me to tell you that i'm getting ready to pour out something on your life that you've never seen before it's not something you will earn it's not something you can deserve but i'm giving it to you anyway god said i'm breaking the shackles of condemnation i'm breaking the shackles of religion and legalism i'm breaking the shackles off of your mindset there's a freedom and there's a grace and god is going to give you that grace and that grace is going to give your bodies peace god's going to heal your bodies because legalism is causing the stomach problems religion is causing the stomach issues god said i'm changing your digestive system and you're going to experience the love of god like never before and the lord even said those who spoke against you their words mean nothing their thoughts mean nothing their desire meant nothing and you will not live the words of wicked people god said i'm pouring on you an anointing like never before because i have selected you i have selected you i have brought you to this moment and god said there is greater there is stronger and there is mightier works to be done in me saith the lord shabako shay God the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you by the time you get home your whole house will be shifted the, you know you understand what I'm saying the Lord said no more battle no more battle Rokosa, receive it worship the Lamb of God he's worthy come on worship the Lord he's worthy Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you, I go. The Lord said, The promises of God are yes and amen. The, the Lord is saying, get, Somebody grab the baby. Can we take a moment? Adrian, I need you to come here real quick, quickly, quickly. God, I need you to come here real quickly. My eyes been on you right here with the white t-shirt. Come here real quick. Yes, yes, yes. I need you to come here. The Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you, Adrian, that this is the season of acceleration. God said, I'm accelerating your spirit. I've been changing things for you because you desire to seek me. I've been changing things for you. He said, you are the firebrand that I plucked out of the fire that the enemy wanted. And God said, now I'm going to pour my spirit on you. And you're going to move in what you always knew you should move in. And God said, you're the bloodline breaker. God said, you're going to cast out devils. God said, you're going to move strong in business. You're going to move strong in the anointing. And you're going to set the legacy for your family. Say the Lord, Shakoto. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord. The Lord says there's a new dimension for you. There's a new glory for you. God told me he made a promise to you when you were eight. The Lord knew you from a young age. The Lord made a promise to you when you were eight. And God's going to revisit that promise. That promise was of, a, was of a transfer. It was of a blessing. And it was at a very tough time, the Lord says. But God told me to tell you, I'm renewing you to the covenant of the contract of the age of eight. And the Lord said, you're more spiritual than people let on. But the enemy likes to attack your mind. God said, I'm going I'm to heal your mind. I'm going to heal your mind. And I'm going to remove the abandonment. I'm going to remove the feeling that those that you love the most are the ones who hurt you the deepest. God said he's getting ready to restore and renew relationship. 
And God said, this season will be much better because I saw a wilderness, I saw a dry brook. But the Lord said, the water is coming. The well has been broken. And things that have been laid up for you. Your family has a rich heritage in ministry. And God said, the mantle of ministry is falling on you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What's your name? Markel? Markel? How did you get here? Huh? Your God brother lives here? Monte? Oh, you? You brought him. He a snitch. No, I'm just kidding. The Lord told me, he said, I'm going to heal your heart. I'm going to remove the betrayals. In a few moments, God's going to heal 